Hello and welcome to the Mission TV show. We're glad that you're here and this is a special show because we're here at the OCI Leadership Training Retreat, uh, which is in Cahada Springs, Georgia. And this is a cool place to be because there's a lot of missionaries from all around the world. Uh, Outpost Centers has about 80 mission, mission outposts around the world and so here we get to meet different missionaries uh, who have been overseas and uh, they're frontline workers even here in America as well. But today we have people directly from the headquarters of Wildwood, which has been in existence for... 70 years. 70 years. That's before I was born, even. Mm -hmm. So, you guys have been there that long, or...? Do we look like...? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've been there two and a half years. Okay. And I've been there for two years. Okay. And what is your names, and how are you part of Wildwood? Okay. Well, my name is Gabriela Chicas, uh -huh. and I work for uh, the Health Promotion Department. Uh -huh. We do health emphasis weekends at different churches. Ah, oh, very mm -hmm. good. My name is Daniel Baquero, and I manage the herb shop and, and help in the health emphasis weekends uh, department and some other hats also that I have to wear there in campus. <laughs> so you're kind of like a one-man show, I mean, do a lot of different things. Kind of. No, yes. you, you manage the health... Shop? It's an herb shop. We, uh -huh. we sell the, the herbs and supplements and natural uh, products for people trying to... That's just one of the departments we have there at Wildwood. That people that go there to our lifestyle center and want to uh, overcome any of the lifestyle diseases they're struggling with. Like diabetes. We, diabetes, hypertension, uh, cardiovascular problems, uh, you name it, cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, they go there and we, we teach them how by applying the A natural laws of health mm -hmm. and by using the products that God has provided for us in nature, uh -huh. how to get well without the use of, of harmful drugs. Very nice. So you're, you're in charge of that. Is that an online store as well? We, we have an online store, mm -hmm. yes. So the, people can purchase products uh, online, but we have a small store there on, in campus. Okay, so what's the website for the online store? It will be www.wildwoodhealth.org. Okay. Then they click on the link, there is a store, and it will take them to, to the store and the products. Very good, very good. So you do, what do you do at these health promotion weekends? Well, we realize that not everyone can come to our lifestyle center. Uh -huh. So we go and take the program to the different churches. Uh -huh. We have, um, last year we, we went to about 15 different states. Uh -huh. um, wherever they, they invite us, we go and we have a program on things such as diabetes, uh -huh. um, cancer, hypertension. Uh -huh. We also have cooking schools and one-on-one -on -one consultations with people who are interested. Really? So this is like a health expo type of thing you do in the community or just right there inside the church? Well, we do health expos as well, uh -huh. but the, the seminars are at the church. Of uh -huh. course, everyone's invited. Um, many churches use it as, a, as an outreach tool. You know, some people won't come to a church service but they will come to something that's related to health. Sure. So that's sure. how we, we reach them. And, yeah. We haven't not only done it on, at, at churches, we've done it also at, at community centers. Mm. And many people from the community attend when we've done uh, cooking uh, classes uh, or seminars on, on hydrotherapy or how to use herbs and how to use natural remedies for your own benefit and, mm -hmm. and how to, to get well from Simple things like headache without having to take a Tylenol or Nadvil or one of these drugs that are at the end have secondary effects and negative right. effects. And right. So we, we, we go out, as she was saying, uh -huh. as Gabriela was saying, we go out and, and teach not only in the churches but also in the community. And we, we found that there is a lot of uh, interest, uh, the, the, especially lately, people are gaining more and more interest in, in a healthy lifestyle. Right, right. Yeah, I think with the new shows, TV shows, and awareness of what's happening in our um, food system these days, there, I think there would be a great deal of interest in health yes. and how to get around some of the things that we're dealing with. So, um, how did you guys come to Wildwood, what, and what have you found there? Well, I came to Wildwood um, about two years ago. Uh -huh. I was working in my home country of Honduras, uh, uh -huh in a small mission project and there I realized I knew not much about medical missionary work. And why did you feel a lack in that area? There's a lot of 
sick people? Well, we, we did outreach uh -huh. as a part of the program. We um, visited people's homes, you know, before and before doing a Bible study or something like that. You wanted to minister to their needs, sure. but I found I was unable to do that. Uh -huh. So I decided to get some training. Uh -huh. So I came to, to Wildwood to get uh -huh. some training. So have you gone back to the mission field or that kind of situation since yeah. your training? Well, um, I went to Africa, to Tanzania for a month. Oh, okay. And then uh, I've also been back to my country. Mm -hmm. and, and how has the training affected your ability to ministry, minister? Well, it opens doors. It mm -hmm. opens doors because people people have physical needs, mm -hmm. and you can help meet those needs. And then it's easier to, to talk to them about other things so once you've, once you help them with something. So you feel like you've been well equipped to meet those needs. I think so, uh -huh. but pr um, probably the best experience comes from working, mm -hmm. not just from the training itself. Uh -huh. So putting that training to practice and developing that. I think so, yes. Okay. So would you recommend that experience to other oh, people? Oh, definitely, so definitely. Yeah. We have the, the training that we had in campus is a six-month training. Uh -huh. uh, we also have an online school, uh -huh. and part of the missionary uh, uh, experience that we provide for our students, as uh -huh. you were saying, is they go and teach what they've learned for, uh, during those six months, they go and teach uh, lay people and pastors all, all over the world. We've done over 300 uh, uh, training schools uh, in, I think it's like 26 or 28, maybe more uh, different countries. I don't remember the, uh, forgive, I don't remember the exact amount of different countries where mm -hmm. these light schools have been uh, given or, or done and we have programs that are not only a one month, but also six months and, and a year. Uh -huh. And from this uh, initiative, many other schools have already started, uh, like in the Philippines and other countries, uh -huh. where they, they are already, they have schools like the one we have in Wildwood, uh -huh. and they're training, constantly training people every six months uh, uh -huh. to send them uh, out into the mission field. Right now, uh, just today, we were talking with the, with the light uh, ministry director. He was sharing that from the Philippines, you know, a school was started and now they're sending missionaries out of Cam Cambodia and Vietnam and those uh, surrounding Asian countries. Nice. And that's, that's the whole idea, to spread the word with uh, the health message. Yeah, wonderful. So then um, what kind of, run us through like this uh, six month training course. What do you learn? What's it like? And like, is it really hard? Is it like a doctoral level or is it kind of easy or tell us about it? Well, it's practical, let's which put it that way. Which means that you learn things that you can do with your hands, such as massage, so not a lot of hydrotherapies. Of course, you do have the, the theory part. Um, okay. It's health evangelism. So you also, you also have things such as um, Daniel, oh. Revelation. Help me out. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, the, yeah, we, you have the, the, the biblical and the spirit prophecy subjects that are studied, but uh, also the medical ones, and, and, and I consider it's, it's intensive. Mm. You, you study physiology, you study uh, massage, hydrotherapy, nutrition, and plus the, the Bible uh, subjects that we just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So you have to study, you have to really you know, be focused during those six months. You but as you were saying, we have the practical part where you, you get to practice uh, mm -hmm. doing massage, you get to practice doing hydrotherapy, you get to practice uh, learning how to do remedies from herbs and things like that. Mm -hmm. That way when you go out into the mission field, you just, just keep on, on training by practice mm -hmm. while doing it on, on, on the field. Mm -hmm. And we, we found out that you learn more while you teach that, that when you're in class, is when you are sent out there into the mission field and you get to teach others and you study more, that it's like you, you grasp more of what you've been studying before. Right. So you learn, you learn some basic principles and then practice. Right. Um, for example, we have the health talks class uh -huh. where they teach you how to do health talks. But as part of the class, you actually have to go to a school, uh -huh. to a high school, and give, give a, health a health talk. talk. That's how you learn. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like fun. Yes, it yeah, is. It can, be, it can be interesting, but it's good in the yeah. end. So how many students are there at Wildwood? Currently, we have 70 students. So Apart from the six-month course, and, and I also mentioned to you the online uh, school, mm -hmm. this coming July, we're starting a, a Spanish uh, training, a six-month six month training in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And 
very soon we're going to start also the online Spanish uh, training. Mm -hmm. But apart from those courses that, that I just mentioned, we have also the advance. So after this, the, the first six months, you could continue your education, then you go more into, a, uh, more into a depth on the medical part, and you get to work uh, in the hospital. We have a hospital in campus. Mm. Uh, we have uh, a lifestyle center where people from all over the country and from overseas, they come and, and get help with the lifestyle struggles. They're having lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I have mentioned three of the departments. We also have a farm. We have a country store. We have a bookstore. We have a thrift store. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have a restaurant, and what we're trying to do is minister to, not only to the community mm -hmm. locally, mm -hmm. but also use those uh, departments as training grounds for, for our students. As, so as they go as missionaries uh, overseas, mm -hmm. they can have an idea how to start their, their own uh, self-supporting ministry wherever they go. Oh, really? So, so like another Wildwood type of organization exactly. that set up and, and operate that. Yeah, and during these 70 years, many other uh, Wildwood uh, daughters have started uh, in several countries. I see. Okay. So then um, what, uh, what's the, I'm going to throw this at you and see what happens. What's the biblical basis of medical missionary work? How do you combine the medical side with the spiritual side? Because a lot of people think, you know, medicine, that's, that's um, what's the word, secular. And the spiritual side, that's the Bible, and that's spiritual. So how do you combine those things together? Where do you, where do you get your model from? Well, you want to... Go like for you it. Both are, <laughs> answers to that Sorry to, to, to take your word, but let me mention that we, we are Christians, and we, we call ourselves Christians because we're following Christ. Right. So Christ is the best example we have on, on this type of work, the medi medical missionary work. You could see throughout the Bible and the New Testament, and even in the, in the Old Testament, that he dealt with people taking care of their needs first. Okay. And he, uh, when we read in Luke, in, in Mark, in Matthew, you see that he went from, from village to village, and, and he took care of their needs. He, right. He healed them from their diseases. Right. You see, there, there is no better way to, to show love to the people but to really provide for their needs. And mm -hmm. what better way since we're living in these days where there's so much disease all over, around, mm -hmm. that, that for us to, to help people with their struggles. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes there's just lack of knowledge. Mm. They, they don't know that things they're doing mm -hmm. are the, the cause mm -hmm. uh, of their problems, of the health uh, issues. Mm -hmm. So yes, Christ was our, our, an is our, our main ex example. Okay. Well, yes, that's, that's what I was going <laughs> to say. Um, if you remember the, uh, the popular stories of Jesus, is when he was healing people, you mm -hmm. know? He that's healed. True. He saw what the need was and he met those needs. Um, and you can also find stories in, in the Old Testament of healing. You know, God, God doesn't only want us to, to um, be well spiritually, but He wants us to, to be in health as well, yeah. as our soul prospers. Right, but mm -hmm. don't you think it'd be better to do it the way the disciples did it? I mean, they preached, Peter got up and preached on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 were baptized? <laughs> I believe there's, there's a time for both. There's a time for both, but then... Just think of it. If you were, if you were, if you're sick, if you have like, let's say, a terrible headache, uh -huh. and someone comes in, starts preaching to you, would you be, would you be willing to listen? Would you be as able well, to pay off, as much you attention? Usually, don't trust a preacher. That's a, that's that's, that's, that's something. To, yeah. But then now, if if it's a friend, if it's someone who has helped you, then uh -huh. you'd be willing to listen okay. much right. more. Yeah. yeah. And once you you really have shown them love, mm. mm -hmm. then they want to know that Ooh. God that you serve. And re remember that quote from Ellen G. White, Christ's method alone will bring true success in uh -huh. reaching the people. Uh -huh. you know, he mingled with them, and took care of their needs, uh -huh. and then he bade them follow me. Uh -huh. So it, it, it's that method that will help us really reach the people for heaven. Yeah. The, 
providing for their needs and show uh, true interest in, in, in them. The, um, the reason I ask that question is, that, is because I believe the reason why those 3,000 were baptized at the day of Pentecost, <clears throat> that was the fruit of Christ's life work. Exactly. So if Christ had not done all that work and, 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 and healed all those people and touched all those lives, they could have preached as hard as they wanted and probably yeah. not, not have gotten anybody or very few people. Right. Yeah. But we, 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 we not only need to do that, as you, you mentioned, and some of us, you know, they were reaping what Jesus had sown. Mm -hmm. That is true. But also, as, as you read during Acts, uh, they continue the ministry. You, you can look at it in, in, in chapter 2 mm. and in chapter 4, mm. that nobody had a need in, in the church. All mm. the needs were covered, that's so they true. had all the things in common. Yeah. And that's exactly to the point where God w wants to take us, uh -huh. where we are making sure nobody is struggling, not only with any need of, you know, personal needs of, of food or clothing or shelter, but also health. So in as much as you have, no, no, what's the word? Um, the golden done? rule. Golden rule, they, I mean, the golden rule was really lived out at that time in Acts because, you know, if, if, if like when I see somebody go by that's really wealthy, my first reaction is I'd like to be that guy. So if I am a Christian and I'm really wealthy, then I, if I did to that person what I wished he would do to me, if, I was, if our roles were reversed, then I would give him what I had, right? So when you actually do that, then, you know, what kind of, I mean, that triggers, first of all, that doesn't happen in the world. I mean, you don't have people giving other people things for nothing. Mm -hmm. There's no free lunch. Right. So when you start doing that, because you guys go out there and you do this healing work, this caring work, and you don't charge. Yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't charge for the service. We ask the church to help us, uh, since we are a self-supporting ministry, mm -hmm. we ask for the church to help us cover the expenses. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, been, we've traveled sometimes 15 and more hours to go to a church mm -hmm. where they see the need of ministering to their community. Mm -hmm. So they invite us and, and we go, so they, they, they help us uh, cover the expenses of gas and, and food and lodging if it's necessary to stop half sure. away, depending on which days of, of the week uh, right. is the program. Mostly it's on, on weekends, but when it's far away, like New York, Pennsylvania, uh, Texas, where, uh, and Michigan, where we have to travel many hours, uh -huh. uh, the church also help us cover the expenses. We try to cover as much as we can from our, our own budget, but uh, right, right, right. we are a donation-based uh, ministry. Right, right. So then how does this work this weekend at a church? Um, is it like Friday through Sunday, or how, take us through a basic weekend? Well, it, it, it depends uh -huh. on the church, uh -huh. but normally we have meetings um, Friday evenings, okay. and then we have meetings all through Saturday through Sabbath. Uh -huh. Um, and then on Sundays we have we have a question and answer session. You know, sometimes people have specific health-related questions, mm -hmm. and then we have a cooking school, uh -huh. so we can make it practical. You know, we tell them you should be eating this way, not that way. Uh -huh. But then if you don't show people how to do it, it's kind of hard for them to put it into practice. Yeah. So that's what we do on Sundays. And then Sunday evening they get to eat. And then they get to eat. Uh -huh. They get to eat. Um, we also do the consultations, like I mentioned before. Uh -huh for people who have you know specific specific needs that they don't want to say out uh, out mm -hmm. loud okay. we have those as well so then th what they get out of that is they're able then to do like a cooking show or some kind of health show for the general public in their church after you know like as an outreach type of thing is that the well idea? we use the weekend itself uh -huh. as a, as an outreach oh. tool we and you can invite people to come we actually okay. send them material that they can print out and reproduce so uh -huh. that they can have people from their community uh, join the oh, event. So like if a church doesn't want to put on its own cooking show or whatever, mm -hmm. they can just ha have you come. Exactly. And they can exactly. learn and then also make connection with people that have come. Exactly. exactly. Oh, that's excellent. And then yeah. if, the, if the church does its part by following up with the people, you know, you can lead people to Christ that way. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, you mentioned something that at the beginning that we've done a couple of times. It, uh, more than a couple of times, we've done health expos. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on the community. Mm -hmm. It depends on what the church is uh, 
uh, is expecting us uh, to do. Mm -hmm. So we've also done done some health expos, you know, where we do health screening and uh, blood pressure mm -hmm. uh, measuring and and uh, uh, lungs resistance and exercise and checking how how they're people doing general health and then by that uh, determine their the real health age mm. because they could be on their 30s or 40s and they probably they have because of their lifestyle they have aged even more mm. so we've done that also health expos mm -hmm. but mostly as she, she was saying we we go to churches and and share with them the the medical knowledge and how to apply the natural laws of health using uh, the bibl biblical principles mm -hmm. and not only people from the church have appreciated it but also people from the community that have mm -hmm. attended mm -hmm. and they sometimes invite us again mm -hmm. uh, either the same year or the following year mm -hmm. because they they've seen results mm -hmm. and not only people from the church and the community in in their health but also results in in the family the church family growing mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. So then how can people get involved? I mean, are, we can just call and request you to come. Um, you're mainly here in the East Coast. What about the West Coast? Are there any options for those guys? We, we've gone as far as they, they asked us to. Oh, really? Uh, we are not the only ministry doing that. Uh, uh, we were uh, the one to do that, and we're trying to work all these ministries, we're trying to work together. And actually, we talked about that here at OCI, uh -huh. trying to work together in order to achieve the same purpose that we're all trying to achieve, which is to reach the people for Christ and, and help. And if we didn't reach them for Christ, at least give them uh, a better life as mm -hmm. long as they live mm -hmm. by teaching them the right principles to live a healthy life. So we are not the only ministry involved in this type of work as I just mentioned there are some other ministries around uh, the country and even overseas okay uh, so if they call us and they're too far west uh, we can always refer them to any of these ministries or too far north uh -huh. but we we've been taking care more mostly of the east coast uh, from Boston down to Florida okay now if they uh, they are interested in having a program such as this they can go to our website wildwoodhealth.org okay. and then follow the link for a Health Emphasis Weekend and just fill out a form and we'll, we will contact them. Okay. You can also call Wildwood and we'll be happy to help. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Now, what uh, kind of encouragement would you give to, let's say, just a regular garden variety church member um, that may be interested in health uh, ministry but isn't sure what to do about that or they're just afraid to um, to make the first step, they don't. They'd like to do a, a, I don't know, do some, get involved somehow. What what would you recommend? What's the first step, and how do you move forward with that? What well, would you say? It depends on how involved that person wants to get. Okay. The person can get training if if he's able to. So then like that would be the best thing course. to come right. and and study. Right. There's also the option of the online school, mm -hmm. which is really good as well. Mm -hmm. um, but if what they want is to have the program is to have a program at their church, mm -hmm. then they can be the contact person. Mm -hmm. They can be the contact person, call us, and then we'll contact the church. And initiate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we'll offer them uh, different options of, uh, by asking questions on the, how is the church, how big, and how interested they are, and uh, mm -hmm. when was the last time they had a program, a similar program. And uh, we could also send, uh, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, uh, a questionnaire, you know, with question, with with questions on on what are the the subjects they're interested in, mm -hmm. and according to that, then we'll bring the health talks and the, the seminars. I see. The way, you know, we bring what they they really are wanting. Great. In the included in this training, is there any cross cultural ministries type training? Like, there's a lot of. Um, like, uh, minorities like from Vietnam and different places living in the country that are kind of like isolated from normal society. Do you guys touch on any of that? Well, in Wildwood itself, we have about 30 different nationalities. 30? Yes. Oh, wow. uh, it's amazing. In my class, when I took the course, there were 22 different nationalities. Wow. We have people from 
all over America, South, Central, and, and North. We have people from the Caribbean, we have people from Europe and Asia. Mm -hmm. And I, I took care of writing them down, uh, all the different uh, countries of origin. Mm -hmm. Most of them were coming from overseas and you know, in order to get trained. And I talked to all of them and most of them would tell me, you know, the Lord placed a burden in my heart mm -hmm. to get ready, get prepared, get trained so I could help others. Wow. And because of that, uh, those people even coming from overseas, they have contacts, they have people they know here in the country. That's how it has been initiated in several times mm -hmm. that we end up going to, to a nation uh, church. Uh, last year we went to the Korean people. They're the ones that have been displaced uh, out of uh, Burma. Uh, Burma. Yeah. And they have a, a place where there, a lot of them have uh, been uh, located there in North Carolina. Mm. We went and ministered to them and did a health program just specially for them. And so we, we've been doing that and we've gone to Haitian churches, we've gone to Hispanic churches, we've gone to um, Filipino churches. Mm -hmm. So we, wherever they invite us to, to share the message, we, we do go. That's awesome. That's awesome. So would you like to talk to the audience and make an appeal, either one of you, um, for getting involved with missionary work and what it's done in your life? Gabriella. <laughs> Well, um, I'd like to invite anyone, everyone actually, everyone who calls themselves a Christian to do this kind of work. I think the greatest need that there is is for people who are willing to sacrifice themselves and go out, go and be the hands of Jesus, help others. Amen. Yes, we, we are very, very, getting very close to the end. And we've seen, because of, uh, on the response of the people, of the different churches, and how we're getting uh, an influence of more and more missionaries, that the Holy Spirit is working in many hearts. And I'm sure yours is one of them. Uh, they are calling many people to get ready, get trained, get prepared to finish the work that is just uh, at the closing. There's still a lot of work to be done, isn't there? There yes. is. <laughs> and that's why he told us to pray for more, for, laborers. for more laborers. Yes, so we're praying for you. Uh, give us one more time the website and maybe a phone number. I don't know if you have it on the top of your mind, but at least a website uh, where people can go and, and hook up. Okay, you can go to wildwoodhealth.org. Okay. Yeah, and then they could call. Uh, the local number is 706-820-1493. 1493 area code 706. Okay, thank you guys so much for being here on the show. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. And thank you for joining us on the Mission TV show, recording here at the OCI Leadership Training Center at Cahuta Springs, Georgia. Look forward to seeing you again. Until then, God bless and keep serving the Master. Amen. Amen.